Well, uh, let's move into 2016's Monsterland. Um, this was my pick. A summary for this film. Welcome to Monsterland. This was clearly written by the people that fucking made the movie. <laughs> I hate these. I hate it when it's the people that made it. Welcome to Monsterland, a terrifying place where savage beasts, carnivorous creatures, and grotesque abominations are the new normal. And the human race is now at the bottom of the food chain. Now... This thing is written and directed by so many goddamn people. Yeah. You can I play a, yeah. a softball game with this roster. <laughs> uh, I suggest if you want to, if you really yeah. are uh, that big of a nerd and you need to know all these things, because I looked at it all. I didn't recognize anybody <laughs> really. Uh, <laughs> um, but I mean, check out IMDb. Um, Jason, do you have information on this? Uh, well, I, I didn't find a tagline for this, uh, but it is distributed by RLJ Entertainment. And it seems like, Every other day, I'm watching one of their movies here lately. Like they've just been pop, I, popping up everywhere uh, on DVD through Image Entertainment in 2016, and this is seven bucks on Amazon. Yeah, I found this at Big Lots for like five ninety nine. So okay. pretty, yeah, this is gonna be a, yeah. Uh, I, I kind of want to go through the the segments a little bit because this is an anthology film. Uh, the first segment is uh, skinny dippers. They get eaten by an unseen creature. What did you guys think about this? I didn't think there was anything special with this segment. I barely no. remember it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, really. I have the first one as gray matter. I must have missed that. <laughs> yeah, it was, was very like, short. Oh, okay. and it, it, they uh, are confusing. I tried to keep track of how many segments there was. There was some. There's just some are so long and some are real short. Like I was. Just, and some of them have yeah. intros, like they tell you it's a thing, and some of them aren't. Um, I kind of tried to break it down, right? Um, the second segment is Gray Matter. Okay. Man, a man wakes up in the middle of a street covered in blood with a huge head wound. Um, this might be my favorite in this movie. It was a good, um, it was a good one. It's got it's, excellent production. Yeah. The sound design is really cool. If you, I, I listened to it with headphones, and the voice in the dude's head was like going back and forth in my in my head you know so i thought that was cool um i i liked the little parasite thing i don't oh, know yeah, man. the little cgi thing it was a puppet or cgi i couldn't tell really i mean it, it was so I, I, well <laughs> the, the close-ups looked like it was a puppet like right they do really close-ups on his face i don't know it looked like it looked good i liked it i liked it it was fun it was fun that's a fun really fun segment um the third segment is called Curiosity Kills. A boy becomes obsessed with his father's radioactive suitcase and the secrets it contains. Oh, I like yeah. this too. <laughs> I thought it was a fun, campy, like cartoony segment. You would see this and it seemed like the, it reminded me a lot of that segment in the Twilight Zone movie that uh, Joe Dante did. Uh, the one where the boy has the powers um, to control everything. And there's a lot of, there's like animation in that one though. But um you know, what did you guys think about this? Did you like it? <laughs> uh, I, I really, I, an anthology, I, I like anthologies that are like around three, four stories at the most, or, but There's a lot you know, in this I didn't like, like, like the AB was it the ABCs of death. I, <sighs> I got like halfway in and I'm like, I'm done with this. I can't, so my head, bad. I'm done with this. I got to but the it, washing machine one or what was it? The fridges? The dude had, a... I, I don't even know. <laughs> I struck it from the file. I, I, I <laughs> blacked that shit out. But, um, gray matter loved gray matter. It, it reminded me so much of Hendon Lauder's, uh, brain damage. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was also it had a deal with a sentient parasite. Um, it was, I loved it. I don't know if it was my favorite, but it is definitely at the top. Yeah, I once we got further thing. into this, there was one segment that kind of blew my mind a little bit, but uh, I just didn't know what, what it was. I was like, I can't wrap my head around this thing, but we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, the next thing that's called Hag, and it's... Uh, uh, is, this is the IMDB summary. It says, inspired by true events, Scott Summers mysteriously experiences sleep paralysis when his wife Mary or Marie sleepwalks at night. Unbeknownst to him, she lives with a horrible secret that slowly begins to eat away at their relationship. Um, <clears throat> uh, I don't know. Uh, I like this, I guess. Um, this, this is the most notable. This has the most notable <coughs> people in it. It has... Um, Eileen Dietz, who did the the face of the demon and exorcist, 
um, John Franklin, who's Isaac from Children of the Corn, uh, and Megan Duffy, who's in the 2012 Maniac remake. Um, it's a, it's a well done piece of business. Um, I like the effects on the hag. It's a creepy story. Um, I saw a negative review of this movie and it mentioned, uh, some bad CGI and there is some, but then oh, yeah. it, they started bitching about the acting, but up until this point, it's been pretty solid, especially this segment. This one has the strongest acting. I think, um, what do you guys think? Oh yeah, this one. Oh, Jason, you go ahead. I I took over. No, yeah. I don't. I don't really have too much to say, like per episode. Uh, but the, the hag, it uh, I do have down as one of my, like oh, I don't know how many. What is there? Eight or ten? Um, of these stories, there is. Uh, I, I have four wrote down specifically, and hag is one of them. So yeah, it was one of my favorite ones. <clears throat> the thing that comes up next is a very weird cartoon. Uh, segment with an old monster hunter. I could have done without this. It was completely just taking up time. This thing's pretty long. They could have just cut this right out. Um, <laughs> uh, the the sixth segment is called House Call. A man shows up to a dentist's uh, home demanding he help him at gunpoint because he thinks he's turning into a vampire. This was good too, I thought. There was a gruesome tooth pulling scene. I think it was a fun segment. Um, the effects weren't the best, but the execution was pretty good, so what can you say? Um, is that one of your top hits there? What, what's this one called again? House Call. The oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it was, cool. yeah, it was a cool little uh, vampire short. I liked it, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, think the, yeah. I definitely really like this one a lot. That is, um, that's definitely up there, too, for me. The acting was really good. It was a really unusual story. Like, I, I thought that was real creative, and... Like the whole vamping out was weird, but the the was okay. But the drama up to it mm -hmm. was really. I thought that was really cool and creative. It was real, real like I put myself in in the shoes of that dentist. Like, oh man, it was, he was he was what going through a divorce, right? <laughs> yeah, you were sitting there getting yeah. drunk, and <laughs> yeah, and all of a sudden this crazy dude comes up and oh my god I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a vampire like jonathan grease and monster squad saying he's a werewolf like this guy's freaking out yeah i mean he i thought it was a great story frank yeah. fix your ca fi frank fix your camera oh fuck what happened? Oh, I'm, just, at, I'm just moved up man i'm just moved up i'm just looking moved. at your beard <laughs> no i was getting into the conversation for you i forgot about that thing all together um uh the the worst thing about this whole movie is the CGI wraparound segments. Oh yeah. Uh, there's so much like there's at the beginning, the first thing that hits you bad CGI is there's an ice machine that flops open and there's like a skull in it for some reason. Uh, it doesn't admit there's tons of sh little shit like that in these terrible wraparounds. But um, the next segment is my, the one that, I, that fucked me up because it's this puppet thing. Uh, it was really enjoyable for me. Uh, it filled me with a really s strong sense of dread. Uh, and I, all I kept thinking was, this is everything to me. But I had eaten a hamburger. So <laughs> I, might, <laughs> I might have timed that out weird. Um, what did you think about the puppetry in this? I think it's called uh, Happy Memories or something. Yep, like that. Happy Memories. Yeah. Which you can buy for it, $5, I saw. It was, um, it was, it was unique. It was different. Yeah. yeah, it was just okay. I was, eh, eh. Should have had a hamburger. <laughs> 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 no, nah, dude, I was working. I was, yeah. I was working. I can't do that work. Yeah, I can't do work that's while true. I'm okay. That's right. true. Um, the next segment is called "Stay at Home Dad." This is the one with where the guy gets injected this with drugs. Is my number one. Oh, is it? Yes. <laughs> it allows I'm him. Sorry, to, I loved it. Allows him to breastfeed their babies. <laughs> uh, <laughs> when I watched, when I was watching, I this, had my my kid walk down while I was watching. Oh yeah, <laughs> walks in the living room. That's worse than what happened this, to me. It's when he's in the mirror, like filling himself up. Oh my oh, god! My yeah, my uh, my oh, wife ate my, my like wife everything else. My wife came home, and that was what was on the screen was uh, the scene where they were like him and his wife were, you know, getting into yeah. Oh yeah. Um, well, I did. Hilarious. <laughs> the, there's a couple notable people in this. Uh, 
Trent Haga is in this short. He was in the Killjoy movies and a lot of really interesting trauma titles, including Terror Firmer. This is the dude that's, uh, you know, he's going to rob them or whatever. Uh, he, I kept, I was like, what the fuck is that guy in? I was like, I've seen him as something. And it was Terror Firmer. If you haven't seen that, it's a classic uh, <laughs> for me anyways. Uh, Richard Grove is in this and he's Duke Henry the Red from Army of Darkness. Uh, the dude that gets at the beginning oh, yeah. with that's like arguing with Ash. Days of the day. Yeah. Yep. Uh, but uh, it's, this is just a fun segment. I liked it. It was funny. Um, the, this, the last thing that happens in this movie, you can just stop it immediately whenever you oh, see yeah. the word helifish. Helifish. <laughs> when that comes across. Yeah. That was <laughs> so funny. I love that. I, I wrote greatest title ever. Oh, God. I it was like, like there was Sharktopus. It was like watching a cut, <laughs> cut scene from a bad video game. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was terrible. Uh, yeah, I overall this movie is so fucking fun. Uh, the only down note for me was Hellyfish, really, and I can just stop the movie when I see that. Eight out of ten. You didn't. You didn't enjoy. You didn't enjoy Hellyfish. Huh? I enjoyed everything else up to that so much. Let me say. It, well, it was so okay. long. It was so. I'll long. just say specifically about Hellyfish. I I love the idea of it, um, and it's. it's it's low budget CGI, which is, I mean, I personally wouldn't do it, but I guess <laughs> whatever, whatever. Like I give them an E forever because some of it looked good. Like with, like the really giant one that's like running in slow motion on the beach, that looked great. Like I, I figured you'd be all about this one. No, but, I'm not. I'm not all about those. Like I like the shark, uh, the Sharknado movies, but that's there's a few other ones. Um, you know, Lake Placid, I like, but big things like that, I'm not into that really. Oh wow! Well, um, I thought, yeah, I so, thought as a standalone, those those jellyfish. If I was just looking at those CG jellyfish, they were sweet. But mixed in with the action and stuff, right. it was like, yeah. obviously, like like you know, stop motion fake. You yeah. know, like it was obvious. Uh, but like any other anthology or most anthologies there's going to be some stinkers mm -hmm. uh, there is in there and here for sure for me um but typical so i would say there's more good than bad in this so that's what that's something uh and all the segments are really <laughs> different from each other oh yeah like, there's no um like it's an anthology and it, like it has the wraparound story but there's really like nothing that connects these Second, or I guess it could be a positive too. Um, yeah, different different styles, direction, effects. Um, it's just cheesy. It's fun. It's entertaining. It kept my attention. Uh, favorites: The Gray Matter, Hag, House Call, and Hellyfish. <laughs> I think this would be better on a second time around because there was just so yeah. like. <laughs> It's a lot to take in at one view. Yeah. Like it's just it's coming at you from so many different angles. I think watching it again, I yeah, I I would be able to tell like what's going on. I'd be able to d distinguish each segment from each other on a second viewing. Um, I thought it was solid. I give it a five. What do you think, John? All right, man. Like I, I love anthologies. Definitely some stinkers on this one, but. House call. I loved house call. That that alone for me was a ten. I mean, the the fake tits were hilarious. I mean, it was just it was like so obvious. You know what I mean? It's like they tried, but they didn't try. And they're like, yeah, it's good enough. Let's film it. And then um, the Cthulhu mythos they brought into it at the end with the little Cthulhu baby yeah. and stuff like. Yeah. Because, like, they, they said, like, stuff about a cult, you know, I can't remember. They did, like, a flashback thing, and she was one of them. I, I really like that. I mean, overall, though, the whole film, I'll give it, like, a six. That's a six. It was, it was, it was cool. Like, check it out. I, that, it's um, definitely worth a, a once viewing, for sure. And for oh, yeah. uh, for seven bucks or what, Frank, whatever you got it for, five, five or six. Nine. I would, 
Yeah, yeah. I would definitely pick it up for that. Oh, yeah. There, there's yeah. a sequel too that looks like it's probably just about as good. I think the the weird the thing that makes it so weird is like like they're different levels of short films. You know, like some of them had crowdsourcing. I read, and others had probably no budget or you know whatever. So, anyways, let's move uh, into. Did you have something else to say, John? Yeah, that animated one. Th- yeah. Um, that's like a sort of sequel to a movie called City of Rot, where it's a whole movie. Like, oh yeah, I remember. I remember that. So that's oh, the really? same old dude with the walker that oh, was okay. going around killing zombies, and he he hunted that. I mean, I, it, I, I felt like it. Yeah, I felt yeah. like it, this played out better than an hour and a half of that. Yeah, that <laughs> that thing reminded. You that's know what that walk. reminded me of was like. Do you remember the the website Newgrounds? They had like oh, video yeah. games and animation. I was like, this looks like a Newgrounds cartoon, like uh, mm-hmm. for real. Um, 